Okay, good evening, boys. We are in a very, very, very important month. The month that we are in is called Elul. And our rabbis tell us that every single month has a zodiac. And I know many questions are going to come up. Do we follow the zodiac? Is it a Jewish thing? So everything, and every concept that you hear is a Jewish thing. And then through the generations, it gets, you know, uh, it gets converted into different ideas. But Zodiac is a Jewish thing. And it's, uh, we just have to know how much, how much we follow it. But uh, the rabbis tell us that every month has a special sign. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, hints to it. Of, uh, depending on the sign of what the month will hold for us. Not only is, uh, is every month its own special zodiac, but we know that two brothers, Yaakov and Esav, both of them, they fought for the 12 months. And our rabbis tell us that Yaakov Avinu, he took six months, and Esav took six months. And depending on who took the months, you can already tell what type of... Uh, energies in the air for example world war one world war two could we all agree they were very difficult months mm -hmm. yes spanish inquisition difficult part time in history first destruction of the temple second destruction of the temple bad months difficult months the golden calf that was created by the jewish people difficult month Moshe Rabbeinu coming down and dropping the Torah. Difficult month. All those events happened under the control of Esav. All those events happened in the months that Esav controls. Now Pesach. Was, is Pesach a happy holiday? For sure. Sukkot, is it a happy holiday? For sure. Who controls those months? Yaakov. Then comes the month of Elul. The month of Elul, the rabbis tell us, was a big argument between Yaakov and Esav. Originally, Esav was supposed to take it. Then Yaakov said, no way. This is before Yom Kippur or Shoshana. I need to take, I need to take control of this month. So they made a deal. Yaakov and Esav made a big deal. What's the deal? Yaakov, Esav said, I'll give you this month only if the Jewish people do what they have to do on this month. If they don't do what they have to do, then I'm going to take the month. It's going to be under my wings. So that's the question. What should be the focus on the month of Elul? So before we get to the main focus on the month of Elul, Elon, we have to, I have to tell you that Darizal says that the month of Elul is a very big gift from who? From Hashem. Very big gift. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous gift. And it's such a time to take, to, 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 it's so important to take advantage of this time. Imagine you have a guy, one time there was a story of Nisim again, says over in his, in his book, there was a poor guy. He comes to, he comes to shul in the morning and he is, he's two weeks away from marrying off his daughter. Two weeks away. And this poor guy, he was missing $10,000. He was $10,000 short. So he goes to, 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 to this one rich guy in the, in, the, in the synagogue. He says, listen, my wife, she's under a lot of stress. I'm under a lot of stress. She's about to faint, my wife. She's about to be, uh, I don't know, something is going to happen to her. My daughter, we need $10,000 in two weeks. We need to raise this much. If we don't raise this much money, then the in-laws are not, they're going to call the wedding off. You have to help me. I don't know what to do. The rich guy says, Come to my office today at 2 o'clock. You'll get the money. Straight. No interest, no loan. Free. You don't have to pay me back. It's a chesed. You'll open it when I ask you. It's a chesed. Wow. Unbelievable. What an opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity you get such a thing. You know, he doesn't have to go around collecting a dollar here and a dollar there. $10,000 from one guy. He got it. What happens? If you guys were this poor guy, would you come at 2 o'clock? Yes. Or would you come at 12 o'clock? 
earlier. Come much earlier. Hey, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Someone's gonna give you ten thousand dollars for free. You're gonna come much earlier. You're not gonna sleep. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be able to. No, you're not gonna. You're not gonna know what to do with yourself. So he comes. One o'clock comes. One thirty comes. Two o'clock. Two thirty. Poor man doesn't show up. The rich guy waits until closing. No one showed up. Okay, he goes home. Yeah. Night time. Next morning, Jahari. The poor guy comes to the rich guy crying. Oh, you don't know what happened to my wife. She fainted. She got it. She's in the hospital. My daughter, she's crying. We don't know what's going to be. I need the money. I need the money. I need the money. He says, you fool. I waited for you yesterday, 2 o'clock. Why didn't you come? I told you to come 2 o'clock to my office. Why didn't you come? Please, you need to help me. I don't know what to do. I says, okay, you know what? Come today, 1 o'clock. You couldn't make it at 2, come today, 1 o'clock. I'll give you the money. So, another opportunity. You would assume he'd come earlier. 12 o'clock, 12.30, 1 o'clock, 1.30, 2 o'clock, 2.30, nothing. No one showing up. Then the next day, he comes to shul and the same scene goes. And the poor guy says, oh, it's so difficult. My, 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 my daughter fainted last night and she went to the hospital and the in-laws are calling and saying, where's the money? We need to make the wedding already. I don't know what to do. And this cycle repeated itself. Rabbi Zayi, could we all agree that this poor man is some loose screws? He's a little crazy. Could we all agree he's a little bit crazy? So you have an opportunity to make $10,000 for free. Without, you know, without owing the guy back. Your daughter's wedding. He's telling you to come. You missed the opportunity. Our rabbi say, sometimes this is how we are. Comes Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. All of us are standing in shul. With our parents, our grandparents. And we ask Hashem, please Hashem, give us refuah Give us life. Give us a good year. Good in school. You know, a good, uh, uh, good money this year. Give us, etc., etc., etc. Hashem says, no problem. I would have, I would have, I would have gave it to you, but you should have came to me the month of Elul, thirty days you had, and uh, you know, I would have gave you a good year. I would have gave you a good, uh, a good seal on in in, in the book of life. But uh, you didn't come to me. You missed the whole. You missed the whole opportunity. You had the whole thirty days to come to me and, you know, uh, change your ways, take something upon yourself. It's like, for example, you have a guy, he, has, he owes $100,000 $100, to the bank. He got a loan. Now, if you don't pay this amount of money after a certain amount, the, the, the loan grows in interest. This guy, he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting, and accumulates, 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 interest, 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 interest. Two, three years pass, the guy's not able to pay the loan. Now he owns, he owes a million dollars. Now it's, now it's a much bigger debt. It was a hundred thousand. Now it's a million dollars. Very big difference. One day he gets a phone call from the bank. Mr. Chakchako? Yes. How are you? Come to us today. Four o'clock to the bank. Go in front of the judge. Tell the judge you're sorry. Tell the judge you love him. Give him uh, some uh, chocolates and white flowers for his wife. And the judge promises to erase this loan. Any interest. And he's gonna erase it from your history like it, like it never happened. Wow, unbelievable. What an opportunity. My million dollar loan that's supposed to grow even higher. Just for me to say sorry. Hug the, the judge, give him some flowers for his wife and chocolates. He's gonna erase everything. Four o'clock. Now once again, I want to propose you this question. Would you come at four or would you come much earlier? Or would you bring much more than just chocolates and flowers? And do much more than just hug him? Probably invite him for dinner. Probably offer to pay his first month rent. I don't know. He's waving a million dollars away from you. But guess what happened to this guy? Like the first guy, he didn't show up. And he only had this 20, he only had this, this hour to show up. And he didn't show up. And then what happens? Back on this loan. The same thing goes for us, our boys. Rav Nisim again says, all of us have the opportunity, all year long, all the sins that we have accumulated, all that we deserve. Hashem is saying, I could erase it all, like it never happened. Erase it from the from, from planet Earth, like you never did, like you ne never did any of those things. The kosher, not kosher food, the lashon hara, the cursing, the the improper thoughts, the improper sights, all the good stuff. Yeah, I can erase it all. 
has come to me the month of Elul, these 30 days, starting today, for 30 days, just be your best. Try to improve. Try to do better. Take a mitzvah upon yourself. Refrain from sin. Just these 30 days. And then comes Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. I'm going to erase all that you did the entire year. What a good deal. Only the King of Kings can do such a deal. Only Hashem, only HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And I want to tell you further, Rabbi Yisai. It says, when a woman gets pregnant, the, the, the minute that she gets pregnant, the day she gets pregnant, from that day, plus 40 days, these 40 days are very important days. The Gemara in Sota says, why are they important? The Gemara says, these 40 days, the parents have the ability to change the gender of the child. That means, if a family... Gender or choose? Gender. Choose. Choose. So listen. The Gemara says in Sota, let's say you have a family has all girls, six girls, and the guy is and he wants boys. So 40 days, that his wife, the first 40 days that his wife is pregnant, he has the, him and the wife have the ability to pray, to, to let's say Hashem has, Hashem in his plans, wants to give another girl, the seventh girl. The day, those 40 days have the power to change it. Yeah, but isn't it better to do it? No, these 40 days, the Gemara says you should do that. You should pray. You should pray these 40 days to change, the, to change it for whatever you want. And you have the ability, and you have the ability. It's 100%. 100%. You have the ability to change the gender these 40 days. So the rabbis tell us, after 40 days, it's called Tiflat Shab, which means it's Hashem already decided, and then uh, it's already, it's a, uh, no, no point to ask, because Hashem already decided what the gender is going to be. But the first, four, first 40 days, you have the ability to change the gender. Questions after. So the rabbis say, from Elul, Till Yom Kippur, how many days are there? 40 days. There are 40 days between Elul to Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. They show us what? Just like you can change the gender of a child, of your child, in this four, first 40 days, so too in, the month, in these months, from Elul to Yom Kippur, these 40 days that we're in now, we're in the middle of them, we just started them. We have the ability to change our destiny. We have the ability to change everything. That's the power of these days. How crucial are these days? How important are these days? Not to just waste it. And there's a big syndrome in the world. Can I tell you? There's a big sickness. What's the syndrome? When God put the mountain over the Jewish people, and He said, if you don't take my Torah, if you don't accept my Torah, this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop the mountain on you, and there will be your burial. The Gemara on Shabbat, page 88. Daf Pehet. And there will be your burial. The Gemara asks a question. What does it mean, and there will be your burial? Wouldn't it be more proper to say, and here will be your burial? No? If you don't accept my Torah, I'm going to drop this mountain, and over here will be your burial. It makes more sense. What does the Gemara say? If you don't accept my Torah, I'm going to drop this mountain and over there will be your burial. What's going on here? So the Gemara asks a question. What's going on here? So what's the answer? So there's a syndrome, boys. What's the syndrome? The, the syndrome is called over there. What does that mean over there? It means, oh Rabbi, I have a whole month of Elul to change. I'll start next week. Tomorrow! You know, Rabbi, I'm still young. Let me have fun. But I, I get serious in life when I get married. Over there. When I'm there. At that stage of my life. I'm married, Rabbi. But you know, the first year, Shana Rishona, it's like, you know, we're getting to know each other. I'll start waking up early for Shaharit and praying late Arvid. You know, but after the first year. Over there. Over there. Then you have your first child. No. The Rabbi comes. No. Shaharit. In Chari, that Rabbi, I'm not sleeping at night. I can't go to Shachari. I'll go when he's two, he's three, when he sleeps during the night, over there, over there. There's a big syndrome. And it's called the over there syndrome. We push everything off tomorrow, next week. And then while we know it, we, all, we blink one eye, we're 30. We blink another eye, we're 60. 
And what happened over there? What happened to the Torah? What happened to the young years where we had the energy, the strength? We had the time to come to the classes. Because when we get busier, it's, it's harder. That's why we need to build our base while we're young now. It's to build, to build this base. Because when you get married, I'm telling you now, it's going to be very hard to learn. When you're going to have kids, I'm telling you now, it's going to be very hard to learn. You have the ability, the opportunity now, do as much as you can right now. What's the best thing to do during the then what's the best thing to do in the month of Elul? You have a beautiful, you ask a beautiful question. That's my month, Rabbi. You have a beautiful question. So listen to this. It's not in my birthday, I have such power. Yes. Especially since I was a normal woman, baby. It says like this, Rabbi. So listen to this very carefully. There's a Gemara in Abu Dazara. The Gemara in Abu Dazara says, If you cook, listen to this very carefully. If you prepare and you cook Erev Shabbat, what does Erev Shabbat mean? Friday. If you cook and prepare Erev Shabbat, you'll have what to eat on Shabbat. Yes? Mm -hmm. Meaning, can you cook on Shabbat? No. no. So if you cook before Shabbat, you'll have what to eat on Shabbat. Correct? Listen to this chidush, Michal, Moshe, listen to this, Abraham. Big chidush. What month of the year is, to, is Elul? Meaning, that what number? If you start from... Nisan, right? Nisan, Tishrei, uh, Nisan, Iyar, Tammuz, uh, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, and... No, no, Adar is before Nisan. The first month is Nisan. Nisan, if you start the month with Nisan, some Gemara is Machlok in the Gemara. What's the first month of the year? What's, what's the first year? What's the first month of the year? Nisan. So Nissan, uh, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, and Elul. So Elul is six. So the rabbis say, if you prepare, if you cook Eir of Shabbat, you'll eat on Shabbat. So if you prepare and cook on the sixth day, which is Friday, you'll eat on the seventh day. So the rabbis say the same thing with Elul. If you prepare and cook in Elul, which is the sixth month, you'll have what to eat on Tishrei, which is the seventh. What does it mean to prepare to cook? If you do proper Tishuva, if you introspect into your action, into your ways, if you improve in Elul, so then on Tishrei you'll be able to eat, you'll enjoy, you won't have to worry, you won't have to be scared. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, it's going to be good. It's going to be amazing. But you have to prepare what? Elul. This is the preparation. This is the opportunity. This is the big gift God gave us, the month of Elul. And if we prepare it properly, if we utilize it the right way, this month goes to who? To Yaakov Avinu. And then when it goes to Yaakov Avinu, it tr transfers over to Tishrei. And then, then, then we have a good holiday season. So what's the best thing to do? One of the main things to focus on, first of all, there's a big misconception. The Rambam says this. The Rambam talks about it. The Rambam says, we think teshuva means, we think teshuva means, I take upon myself mitzvot. But Rambam says, teshuva means to really change. It means real change. It means I take this, this thing that I'm doing, let's say wrong thing that I'm doing, and I'm not doing it anymore. I'm really changing. Now that I'm continuing to do the sin, but I'm doing mitzvot on the side. I'm learning a lot. I'm going to the mikvah more. I'm giving tzedakah more. I'm wearing tefillin on time. Very good. But did you change this right here? Are you stopping this over here? Are you really doing the teshuva for the past sins that you might have not done? That's the big misconception the Rambam says. It's good that you're accumulating mitzvot, but are you stopping the averot? Are you changing as a person in terms of these averot? So that's one thing, is to refrain from the sins. Two, take upon yourself a small mitzvah in the month of Elul. Small. Anything. Whatever it is. You tell yourself what you need, what you think you need to work on. And be consistent and do it for 40 days. And you will see if you do it for 40 days, not only are you going to be accustomed to do it after more, two, you see you're going to have a good year. And the third thing, and I think is the most important thing. You ready? There was once a child, listen to this. 
there was a family that couldn't 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 have children for a long time. After so many years, Danny, finally, Hashem gives them a gift. You with us? Hashem gives them a gift of a baby boy. The baby is born. They're so happy. After 10 years, wow. Hashem gave us a gift. There's one problem. The baby was born with heart problems. The doctor that's there, examining the child, he's saying, listen, this kid needs emergency surgery. Emergency. He does not look like he will make it alive. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> the happiest day of their life became now one of the worst. What do we do, doctor? Tell us. Who do we go to? There's a specialist that specializes in heart surgeries for child for children in Boston. Quickly call, quickly make an appointment. Because he, you know, usually he's very he's, he's he's really busy, this doctor. So call as soon as you can, call right now. They call. They try to make an appointment. The secretary tells them, <laughs> you have a one month wait. One month wait. So we cannot afford to wait one month. Please. We waited 10 years to have this child. The doctors are telling us he needs immediate surgery. His heart is fa his heart failure. Please. Can we speak to the doctor? Maybe he'll have, you know, he'll find it in his heart to let us come in earlier. She gives the phone to the doctor. The doctor hears the story. And Baruch Hashem, the doctor said, come as soon as you can. I'm going to take you first thing in the morning tomorrow. The doctor is getting his team ready. 24 members on his team. Nurses. You know, the, the guy who sews the heart. The guy who opens up the heart. The anesthesiologist. The whole team. 24 members in the team. They get together. They're ready to perform the surgery to this child. So they go. They go. The child is there. Five hour surgery this child's heart the doctor comes out he takes his uh, gloves off he's so happy he's a successful surgeon your child will live not only will he live down the line no complications wow the parents are so happy unbelievable thank you so much doctor one hour in what happens Jacob Shabbat. no the child has a high fever what do we do high fever what do we give him Doctor says, no worries. It's very common. Very common that, this, that children, after such surgery, they have high fever. Give them this, give them that, it's going to go down. Two hours later, the child passes away. You can only imagine what the parents are feeling. What they're going through. The child passes away. Is yeah. The doctor goes, this famous surgeon. By the way, I forgot to mention the most important part. Why is this surgeon, this doctor, so famous? Because he had... 100% success rate. 100%. Meaning what? Whoever came into him always left him alive. He was... The success rate was 100%. The doctor goes up to the CEO of the hospital, the owner of the hospital. He says, I resign today. I'm resigning. Here's the coat. Here's the badge. Here's it. Let's finish. I'm resigning today. I quit. What happened? <laughs> well, you quit. If you quit, the hospital is done. You have to close the hospital. You are the hospital. The whole hospital is where it is today is because of you. I made a promise to myself. I made an oath to myself when I just finished medical school that I, if anyone from my hands dies after my surgery, that day will be my last. After 20 years serving, after 20 years performing, being successful, today I was unsuccessful. This child that I performed heart surgery on has passed away. I'm resigning. Thank you very much. But doctor, maybe it wasn't you. Maybe you did nothing wrong. Maybe someone on your team, the nurse, the anesthesiologist, the guys who sold the heart, maybe they did something wrong. Maybe they did something wrong. Maybe it wasn't you. No, doctor. No, uh, CEO, it was me. He goes down to his office. He collects all the things in the box and finished. He's, he's, he's about to leave. He gets a knock on the door. Hello, doctor? Yes, who's there? Do I know you? Are you part of my team? Are you part of my team? No, I'm not part of your team. You don't know me, doctor, but I know you. 
can I can I come in? Yeah, sure, come in. She comes in. And she says, you know, the tools that you use to perform surgery, I sterilize those tools. You know, back then, boys, that we didn't have the, we had, the luxury we have today. We have different tools for every procedure, right? New tools. Back then, they didn't have such such a luxury. They had to sterilize their tools mm -hmm. for every surgery. What does that mean? Means that one surgery you had you had tools for one surgery right then the scissors the this right all the stuff that you need to open up the heart or whatever it is you're opening up they had to clean it in a hot box they would put it it's like they torture it with fire to kill the germs and bacteria then they can use it for a new surgery nowadays if a surgeon uses tools he throws it out and they bring him new tools that are sealed in the in the bag. Back then, they didn't have such a luxury because it was expensive, it was hard to get, so they had to sterilize the tools over and over again. So he says, I sterilized the tools. And then an hour before you performed surgery on this boy, you did it, you, you, there was another doctor that performed the surgery some, uh, uh, somewhere else. So I got the tools from him and I needed to sterilize it. Usually it takes me 30 to 40 minutes to sterilize. I'm about to start, I get a phone call from my son's school my son has broken his leg and I should come immediately. He's in the ER. So I go. I don't know what to do. I have these tools over here. It takes me 30 to 40 minutes to sterilize. I can't, I don't know what to do. And I know you have a surgery coming up. So I took soap. I took hot water and I just washed it. I washed it with soap and hot water. And I just left it. And I wrote, sterilized. It's those tools that still had the bacteria and the germs from the first surgery, that's what killed the child. It wasn't a new doctor. Don't resign. You did nothing wrong, it's those tools. On Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we do what's called surgery. What do we do surgery with? We, on Shul all day, we learn, we pray, we do whatever it is we have to do. And we perform surgery. All that we did all year long, all those clipot, all those black dots in our soul, all that impurity, through Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we cleanse it all. But what's the main tool we use to clean out the dirt in our soul? What, what, what part of, of the body do we use to pray? Your mouth. What part of the body you use to confess your sins? Your mouth. One of the biggest tools we use to clean out our sins is our mouth. But if our mouth is filled with germs and bacteria, filled with curses, filled with lashon hara, filled with negativity, filled with disrespect to our parents, Filled with talking back, filled with nicknames to our friends. If our mouth is filled with this bacteria, what happens? When it comes to doing surgery, it's not sterile. It's full of germs still. So when you come to do the surgery, we're doing more harm than good. So the Abu Dha are one of the main things to work on this month is to watch your mouth. Is to be careful what we say, how we speak, the curses, the talking back, the nickname giving to our friends. That's one one of the most important Abu Dhas we, we need to focus on. Because if we work on this and we sterilize our mouth the whole month, when we come to Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, we can do surgery with clean tools, with a clean mouth. With a clean mouth. That's why, boys, this is a very big month. It's a very big month. Everyone knows what they have to do. Each person knows what he has to work on. But the main thing is don't be the don't 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 do this syndrome over there. Don't have this syndrome. Don't have this sickness, the over there sickness. Tomorrow, next week, I'll start again later. No, right now. We have the opportunity now. Who knows if we're gonna make it tomorrow? We have the opportunity now. We heard this message today. There's a reason why you heard it. Whether you're online or you're in person, you heard it today, you gotta act upon it. You have to act upon it. We have to take this month seriously. We need to give the power to Yaakov, not to Esau. And I want to ask you boys a question. You ready for this? And this will finish with the recording. Listen yeah, to this. Yes. Listen to this very carefully. This I read 
from Rabbi Ben Sion Mutsafi. If I have a book, Allah question. If I have a book that's ripped, page from my book is ripped. I don't have glue, I don't have tape, nothing. And this is my favorite book. The only book in the market. I need to sew it back. So I take dough. Dough. I put it in some water, put it in some oil to make it sticky. And I put a little bit where the ripping is. I let it dry, it becomes hard and good. The page I can flip, it's good. It's like it's like it's like tape, it's like glue. I'm using it now, the book is good, I can use it with good health. Comes Pesach, Passover. Can I use this book? No, no. Is this kosher? No. Or is it chametz? Chametz. My dear brothers, all of you are answering no. And you have a very good claim. Why no? Because it's chametz. It's chametz, right? But the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch says something else. It depends when this was clayed. If it's within 30 days, then it's still chametz. After 30 days passed and then Pesach came, it became part of the page. Listen to this very important message. It became part of the page. And good, you can use the book. It's not chametz. This dough became part of the page. It's like the page. No problem. You can use it on Pesach. It's not considered chametz. So once again, what's that magic number? 30. It's within 30 days. Not good. It's after 30 days. Enjoy. It's perfect. Nothing wrong with it. Comes the rabbi and he tells us something very powerful. When we burn chametz on Pesach, right? When we burn chametz, as a mitzvah to burn chametz. What does chametz symbolize on Pesach? Your desire, your yitzhara. And the closer you are to yitzhara, the more it becomes like glue. The more it becomes attached to you. So when you burn the chametz on Pesach, what do you have to have in mind? You're not just burning the chametz, but you're also burning your desire. evil inclination, your desires for the evil. And the Yitzhara, you're burning the Yitzhara. The rabbi says something very powerful. This number 30, if it's, in, if it's after 30 days, the chametz becomes part of the page, becomes part of the person. If we don't take these 30 days between Elul to Rosh Hashanah, these 30 days, if we don't take these 30 days and we don't work on ourselves, if we don't change, even a little change is a big difference in Hashem's eyes. And if we don't take change, you know what happens? The chametz becomes part of the page, becomes part of the person. Then after these 30 days, it's very hard to change your destiny. It's very hard to change the person. That means if you start waking up, Rosh Hashanah, I need to change. You, it might be maybe a little bit too late unless you really go extra hard. So this 30 days makes the m m makes all the, all the uh, all, all the difference. These 30 days are so crucial. Whether it's going to be chametz or not is in our hands. Thank you for your attention, boys. Baruch Hashanah Amen.